Happy New Year. Good to see you guys. I'm sure everybody's still keeping up with the resolutions, right? Yes, that was very emphatic, Bill. Thank you. Hey, why don't you guys stay in with us? We're going to sing a song uh, called Living Hope. A great way, I thought, just to start the new year here as a church, uh, reminding ourselves that, uh, you know, we celebrated Jesus coming during the Advent season. Uh, some of us are still doing that. Um, but it's a great reminder, you know, um, a common phrase I hear a lot during Christmas time, and it's totally true, is that Jesus, you know, he came to die. And that's, that's totally true. But if, but if our hope, uh, you know, stopped with his death on the cross, that's really only like a piece of the pie. And the whole thing is that he rose from the grave again. And so the, the hope that we have is, is, is in Jesus, and it's literally a living hope. You know, the Bible says that he's at the right hand of the Father interceding for us. And so this morning, let's sing, let's sing Living Hope and kick off 2022 together. How great the chasm that lay between us How high the mountain I could not climb In desperation I turned to heaven Spoke your name into the night Then through the darkness Your loving kindness Tore through the shadows of my soul The work is finished The end is written Jesus Christ, my living hope Who could imagine so could fathom such boundless grace. The God of ages stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. The cross has spoken, I am forgiven. The King of kings calls Great. 
salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Jesus, you are my living hope. Let's sing the chorus one more time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, praise the one who set me free. Jesus, thank you so much for being our living hope. God, that in a world that just constantly feels like there's sorrow, heartache, hardships, Father, coming out of the holidays, some of us feel like we're on top of the world, and some of us feel like uh, we just reminded of, of holes in our heart. But Jesus, thank you so much that the hope we have in you didn't end with death. It doesn't stop with this life, Father. It's a living hope that goes on forever. And Father, we can join you in this new resurrected life here on earth now and then forever with you. And it's in your name that we pray. Amen. Good morning. You may sit down. Um, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, am I on? There we go. Uh, yeah, Happy New Year, everybody. We are so glad that you chose to join us and worship today. Um, if you are here in person in front of you, you'll see a Connect card that has a QR code on it, or if you're online in the online chats, you'll see a link pop up. So what that Connect card does, we would love to fill it, for you to fill it out if you're new, and that will get you connected to our email, and then I'll reach out to you with next steps. Um, and with those next steps, my name is Amy, I forgot to say that, I'm the Connections Director here at Fellowship Asheville, and I would love to help you get connected. So that is the first step to doing that, is just to let us know your name. Um, next. There's other ways to get connected, and part of that is just following us on social media. If you want to take out your phones right now, you can like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, or subscribe to us on YouTube. Also, if you would like to follow along with today's message, you can download the Bible app if you haven't done that, and just go to events, and you can find us, Fellowship Asheville, there, and you'll get our announcements from today, sermon notes, and everything else with links that connects you to our website. Um, the website is where you can find all things Fellowship Asheville, and that is fellowshipashville.com. Um, so some of those next steps that I would love to invite you to, if you have not done that already, um, there's two things. First is our discovery event. Our next discovery event is a discovery lunch, and that's on January 16th, right after the service. And what those lunches do is you will get to meet others who are new to fellowship. You also get to meet some of our staff. Um, and then just find out ways to get connected to the church. You'll learn a little bit about our vision, mission, and values. Um, but you can dive more into that at the next step, which is the membership class. That membership class is for anyone who has attended one of our Discovery events. And that membership class is on February 20th. So, yes, February is a month away. But with that membership class, there's five videos and a little bit of homework to do. So that's why we're telling it to you now. So you can register for either of those events online um, at fellowshipashville.com, and if you have any questions, please let me know. I'd love to have you attend those. Um, another thing that we would love to be honored to do is to pray for you. Um, if you have a prayer request right now, um, if you're online, you can click request prayer in the online chats. Also, at the end of today's service, we'll have prayer hosts in the back of the sanctuary that you can go up to and they can pray with and for you right here and now. Or you can email your prayer request at prayer at fellowshipashville.com because we, as a body, want to be praying with and for you as you have needs that come up. Or we also just like to celebrate with what God is doing. So feel free to email those prayer requests to us or share those praises because we want to commune together and join together in praising God for all that he's doing. Um, one way that we, do, one tangible way that we do worship God is through our gifts and our giving. Um, and that's because we want to give back what he's given to us. So if you would like to give today, if you're in person, there's offering boxes along our side and back walls. If you're online, there's a give link in the online chats. Or you can go to our, our um, website, fellowshipashville.com slash giving, or text 84321. There's many options. If you didn't get any of that, go to our website, click give, and all the options are there. Um, and then lastly, 
uh, is our interactive family worship. We want to help give you tools to engage in God's word together. So if you have a piece of paper and a pen and you want to write things down throughout the sermon to help you engage in God's word, here's what I want you to do today. Draw a chair in the middle of your piece of paper. And that will all make sense soon as you listen to Fred through um, his message today. But what we're going to do is we're starting in a new sermon series today. And part of that series is we're going through the Songs of Ascent. Um, so the Jewish people, they would sing songs as the, in their yearly annual trip to Jerusalem. Um, so draw a chair in the middle of your paper. Write things that come to mind through his sermon. And it all makes sense soon. So speaking of Fred, he's coming up. Fred's our lead pastor, and he's got one more announcement for us. Thanks for being here today. Thanks, Amy. All right, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Oh, so good. So good. Um, I've, and so next year, just as a heads up, uh, New Year's Day is on Sunday. So I'm wondering if I will get that enthusiastic of a response at 10 o'clock on New Year's Day. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Well, good morning. Uh, my name is Fred. I am the, the lead pastor here. I get to be the lead pastor here. And as Amy said, um, I've got uh, just one more announcement for you, and that's about growth groups. Uh, growth groups are our hub and kind of heartbeat of who we are as Fellowship Asheville. Um, uh, we often said uh, we often say life um, our, our life change happens better in circles than it does in rows. Thank you, Andy Stanley, for that. Um, it, but it's true. Like coming here and doing what you're doing is great, and it's part of the spiritual growth process. The other part is sitting in a circle uh, with people, studying God's word together, praying for one another, and living life together. And so we would love for you to do that. Uh, that growth groups will start up again in a couple of weeks, so you've got time to go on our website, look through our website, see uh, if there's a group there that, that um, uh, would work for you. Uh, we are launching a new group uh, this week, too, so there's a brand new one on there, a brand new growth group. But I will tell you this. Um, as I say, look to see if there's one that, that fits your schedule and stuff like that. One of the things we don't value here at Fellowship is convenience, right? One of the things I have found about spiritual growth is when you actually make a sacrifice for something, that thing becomes more important to you. And so it may mean for you to find a group, you have to adjust your schedule, you have to get a babysitter, you have to do something to be able to participate in that group. As your pastor, I want to say go for it. And see what God does with that. Because we've got space in some groups. We'd love to see you in one. And then we're also launching a focus group uh, in a couple of weeks. At the, actually at the end of the month, January 25th, uh, called Be the Bridge. And Be the Bridge is a group that goes through a book by Letitia Morrison uh, that talks about racial reconciliation. And they do it through the grid of the gospel. Now, I'm going to say this because I think this is important. It's not perfect. Right? As a church, our goal is to increase our understanding and increase our empathy about what biblical racial reconciliation looks like. Even though it's not perfect, I believe it's the best thing out there for what we want to do. And so I ask you to go into this group with an open mind and listen to her story, listen to what Jesus has done in and through her, and let that give you questions. Right? Let that give you questions. Uh, Brian Flagler and uh, MC are going to be leading this group. They're brilliant. I almost want to go through the group again uh, because I can't wait to, to, to see them lead this group. So, so, so that'll also be on our website. If that's something that God has been stirring in you or something you've wanted to find out more about, now's the, the time to do that. Now, you might be wondering, as Amy mentioned a chair, you might be wondering why there's this old but lovely chair up here, right? Um, I'll tell you about it in just a minute. I will, because before we um, get started today, I want us to take a minute. It's a brand new year. We've all got New Year's resolutions that obviously will start tomorrow. Um, uh, you know, that's just kind of the way, like anybody do that? Anybody already said your New Year's resolution is going to start on Monday instead of yesterday? Right? Yeah, see, that's what we do, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, good luck with that. Um, uh, so, so, you know, you, we come in here, we've got all this stuff. Um, uh, here's what I want us to do. I want us to take a minute and get our heads and our hearts ready to experience God's Word, ready to experience uh, what the Holy Spirit has for us. And, and here's what I want you to do. Today, I want you to invite uh, the Holy Spirit to do what only the Holy Spirit can do in your soul. I want you to invite Jesus to change 
maybe the way you believe today, maybe the way you think, uh, maybe the way you behave today. Uh, Because that's spiritual work, and that's something that only Jesus can do. And I invite you to, to, to let Jesus do that so that you leave this place today, particularly with more faith and more trust in him. And so let me pray for us as we dive in today. Jesus, we are people gathered here in this place and gathered online, and and uh, we bring a lot with us. Um, sometimes it's baggage, and sometimes it's really good stuff, but we bring a lot with us into this place. And I pray that you would allow us to, to put all that down to be able to see you clearly, to see you uh, for who you are, and that, and that that would change us, that that would, would change the way we believe, it would change the way we think, it would change the way we behave. And God, I pray that you would be glorified in that. In Christ's name I pray, amen. Now, if you have your Bibles, go ahead and open to Psalm 120. That's where we're going to be. You can also follow along in the Bible app on your phone. Um, If you just go to the Bible app uh, under events and under Fellowship Asheville, we're there. And so you can follow along there. And as you're turning there, let me tell you a little bit more about what Amy said uh, for the Family Interactive piece, what the Songs of Ascent or the Psalms of Ascent are. They are a songbook within a songbook is a way to think about it, right? The Psalms are songs. The songs that the nation of Israel would sing, sometimes are the songs that we sing. But Psalms 120 through 134 are a particular songbook in the midst of this big songbook called Psalms. And it's called the Psalms of Ascent, the Songs of Ascent. And, and, and what these would do, these were sung at a very specific time by a very specific group of people. They were sung by people that were traveling, and this is important, traveling from the place they lived to the place they considered their true home, right? From, from the place that they lived to Jerusalem, to the temple, to the place where they worshiped, the place that represented everything that was true and, and core about them, their true home, their true home. And each year, the Jewish people, as they traveled from where they lived to where they called home, they would do this three times a year. They would do it for for Passover, they'd do it for Pentecost, and they would do it for the Feast of Tabernacles. And as they traveled, this was their songbook. Like, anybody have, like, a mixtape for road trips? I mean, not mixtape. Do you have a playlist? (laughs) I caught myself. I, I should get a point for that. I caught myself, right? Right? Like, like anybody got a, a road trip playlist that you've got, right? That's what this was. This was their playlist for their road trip, right? And, and, and as, they would, as they sang these songs, it, w- it would capture the different people that were on this journey, the different, the different pilgrims that were on this journey. Because what each one of these psalms represents is it represents someone. Like from the forgotten outsider, which we're going to see today, Psalm 120, all the way to the holy servant, the person that's, that's preparing the temple for worship. That's Psalm 134. And everyone represents someone. So, so whether you're an adult, a teen, or a child, whether you're in person here, or whether you're, you're virtual, these songs capture the heart of God towards those who seek to know him, for those who seek to experience him. And so truly, no matter who you are and no matter where you are, God's heart is that you can always come home. You can always come home. That's why we're calling this series Coming Home, a place for anybody. It's why in the graphic we don't see the other end of the table, right? There's always room for more, right? That's why we're calling it a place for anybody. We're all on this journey from the place we live to our ultimate home in heaven, to our ultimate home and fulfillment in Jesus alone, right? That's our journey. And so, so this, is, this is for all of us. And what we'll see as we work our way through the Psalms on this journey from the place we live to the place we call home is that in Jesus, guess what? There is a place for anybody. In Jesus, there is a place for anybody. Which is why the chair is up here. Let me tell you about this chair. This chair, uh, when I started thinking about this series and I started writing this message Um, it represented one person. What I realized is there's actually four different people this this chair represents. Because this is an old, lovely chair from down in the basement here. Um, uh, It's like heavy as all get out. Um, It's an old and lovely chair, and it represents four friends of mine. Nancy, Robert, Victor, 
if y'all are watching, um, uh, you, I didn't call you old. Just I did, but you're lovely too. It's just that they are the oldest friends that I've had, right? Two of them don't know Jesus. Two of them think that the place that they live is their home. And they think that's all there is. Two of them do know Jesus, but they've wandered off. And I pray for them to come back to this table, to come back to this, to this chair of, of rest and trust in Jesus. Oh, I said three. I said Tony. He was the one that I mentioned. How many of you caught that? I said four, but I mentioned three names. Tony. Tony. Now, here's, here's what I'd love to see us do as a church, and I'm going to invite you to do this too. Do you have someone specific that you're praying for, either to join in the journey with Jesus to, from the place they live to, to home to, to do that, or someone to return on that journey? If you do, bring a chair. Bring that. Okay, you know in your house you have sitting in chairs and looking at chairs? Right? Bring the looking at chair. You know, like, 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 and let's, I would love to have this stage filled with empty chairs behind me. We'll be doing this series from now until Easter. So pick a chair, bring it, bring it on Sunday, set it up here, or email me during the week uh, and bring it up here and I'll meet you. Because here's the part that I don't know how this is going to work out, but I would love to hear the story of your chair who your chair represents, why you're praying for them. Because, y'all, I believe as a church, we've all got people that we want to be on this journey with us. And let's have an empty chair for them as we're going through this journey. Because not only will you see them in these songs, in these psalms, you're going to see yourself as well. That's the beauty of God's word. Well, let's dive in to our passage uh, today because we're going to see specifically who's on this journey. And like I said, I think it'll capture some people in your life that come to mind. But I think what you're also going to see is that it captures you. So Psalm 120, it starts off with this. It says, it says, I, uh, it says in my distress, is the first part of this psalm. In my distress. So right there, at the very beginning, you see the emotion that captures this song. You see the word that captures this, this, this song. Now, distress in Hebrew, the, language of, the, the Hebrew language is a very expressive and emotional language. Like Greek is very like to the point, follow the rules. Hebrew, you know, you kind of get the picture of it, right? Like, like it, it's, it's very, I don't want to say loosey-goosey, but it is a little bit picturesque and emotional. This word distress is hilarious when you see what it means because here's the the and I say hilarious like eh, in a very scary way because it's the idea of having a rival in particular it was written during a time where polygamy uh, was common where you'd have one husband and multiple wives and this word distress describes what a wife feels towards another wife a yesy, that just got real, didn't it, right? Like, 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 like it, is, it is the stress of instead of marriage as being this place of, of joy and intimacy, it is intimacy, it is this, this stress of competition. It is the stress of battling to be the favorite over someone else. It is the stress of things pulling you in different directions. Right, distress is this. It is the feeling of someone or something pulling your time and energy away from where it needs to be. Right? It's, the, it's the person at work, right, to bring it to our time. It's the person at work who's, who's up for a promotion maybe or who wants to advance in the job and the people around them realize that they can cheat to get ahead, right? They can bend the rules, they can fudge the numbers, they can get real creative on spreadsheets to make things look better than they actually are. And you're put in this place and, and your stress is, do you pursue integrity in moving the mission of the company forward or do you play the game that they're playing to get ahead? And it pulls you in a different direction, right? It's the kid who wants to be a better artist than the best artist in the class. And he, and, and, and he realizes that he can cheat, right? He can copy something. He can trace something. Or he could create something new. And if he creates something new, it's not going to be perfect and it's not going to be as good as the best artist in the class. And so he's not going to be the best artist. So does he cheat or does he create, right? Right? Let me tell you, I was the kid that traced, 
because I wanted to be the best artist. You know what I figured out? People know you traced. All right? It's better to create something new and let it not be perfect. Right? That's the pressure for, for, for that. Maybe it's the parent, right, who's working, who's raising kids, who's, who's trying to keep a house in somewhat, some kind of order. It's the stress of being pulled in too many directions. Now, here's the question for you as we continue in the song. Where are you in distress? Where are you pulled in multiple directions that you know, like, this is why I'm here. This is what I need to be doing in my job. This is what, what, what moves the vision of the company forward. This is what moves the values of our family forward. And yet, I'm doing all this stuff. And even though some of this stuff is good, some of it's not. And you feel the stress of that. Like, like you don't have to raise your hand, but any of you know what I'm talking about? Right? That's, that's where this person is. Now, keep in mind, they're on a journey going from where they live to, to where they go home, and so their distress is, is even multiplied. Imagine, if you will, for a moment, how many of you left town and got back and you did a road trip with little kids, right? Imagine doing that without goldfish and movies. That's distress, right? That's, that's where this person was. Look at verse 1. It says, it says in my distress... Because this is what they do with it. I called to the Lord and he answered me. All right, so what does this person do in their distress? They pray. That's what call to the Lord means. That, that in his distress, in her distress, they, they called to the Lord and God answered their prayer. Now before we see the answer to God's prayer, we get to see what they prayed. And so, so here's this person's distress. In verse 2 it says, Deliver me, O Lord, from lying lips and from a deceitful tongue. And so this person in particular... Their distress was that the people around them in the place that they lived were either lying about him or lying to him. Like wherever she was surrounded by people, those people don't value or honor truth like she does. And so this is a prayer for deliverance. This is a prayer of saying, God, take me out of this place because I value truth and they don't. It's a prayer that says, get me out of here. Now, what's interesting is some say this song was actually written when the nation of Israel wasn't in the nation of Israel anymore, when they were exiled into Babylon. And so literally, everyone around them wasn't from home, right? They were in this foreign country and in this foreign place and distant and far off, and so they couldn't even come home. And so, so, so they're an outsider, not fitting in with the people around them. And it's exhausting. And maybe on your journey from where you live to the place you call home— you too have felt this level of exhaustion of being pulled in so many different directions. Now, here's what we say. We don't say, Lord, deliver me from these people, right? What we say is stuff like this, Jesus, get me out of here, right? We say, I'm done. I'm done. I can't do this anymore. We say, I can't take this anymore. We say, I can't wait for heaven. And all those things may be true, but they are markers of distress. Or maybe, maybe you said this. It's take all those comments and look at their third cousin removed, and it comes out this way. It comes out, I'm fine, this is fine, everything's fine. Anybody say that? Well, I say it all the time, and here's what it means. If we break down the word fine, it means that I'm, I'm frustrated, I'm insecure, I'm a bit neurotic, and I'm running on empty. Right? That's what fine means. Right? At least that's what it means for me because I say it all the time. And when I do, it's just because I'm weary. It's because I'm tired. It's because I'm in distress. I feel too many things pulling me in too many different directions just like this person did. Well, look at God's answer in verse 3. Verse 3 says this. What shall be given to you and what more shall be done to you, you deceitful tongue? In other words, in other words, here's where the psalm goes, saying what will happen to those who lie? Right? What will happen to those who are lying to or lying about the songwriter? What's going to happen? Verse 4. Verse 4 happens. Verse 4 says this. A warrior's sharp arrows with glowing coals of the broom tree. That's what's going to happen to them. Here's what this means. 
Here, what this means is that arrows and hot coals are signs of judgment. The broom tree in particular was a tree that they would make coal from because it burned hot and it burned long, right? Like a Duraflame. Remember those things? Like, like you put it in there and you lit that thing and it just took off, right? Like, like that's what this is. God's response in this song, God's response to their prayer is that, listen, to the people who cause you distress, their judgment is coming. Their time is coming, Right? And so you see, for this person on a journey from where they live to the place they call home, home is the place they belong. Jerusalem is the the place they belong. It's the people they belong to. Here's what's going to happen when they get there. When they get to Jerusalem, there's going to be feasting and there's going to be prayer and there's going to be worship, y'all. They're coming to church, right? And they got, they're going to get all dressed up, and they're going to look good, and they're going to smell good, and they're going to make sacrifices, and it's going to be incredible. But the problem is they also have to go back to the place they live. They have to go back to the place that's going to cause them stress. Y'all, their Monday morning is coming. Two to three inches of snow, actually, parents who've been having kids at home for two weeks. Hello. Teachers, yay! <laughs> yay! <laughs> Right? Like, like, like Monday morning is coming for you. Tuesday morning is coming, right? Like, like, like God's response, though, is this. Just remember, one day, to this person in particular, one day, those who lie about you and those who lie to you will stand before God. And then, if not before, at least then they will see the damage they've done. One day, that's coming. Now, Paul in the New Testament also talks about this. and He wrote this, this book called Romans because guess who it was written to? The Romans, right? That's who it was written to. And it was written to the, to, the, to the church who lived in Rome at the time when people were being killed and imprisoned for following Jesus, right? Talk about distress. That if you did what we're doing right now, you could leave this place to armed guards throwing you in prison for doing it. That's distress. Here's what Paul wrote to them in Romans 12. He said, do not repay anyone evil for evil. But be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everybody. And if if it is possible, as far as it depends on you, I love that line, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my friends, but leave room for God's what? Wrath. Leave room for God's judgment. For it is written, it is mine to avenge, I will repay, says the Lord. Right? In times of distress, when we're done, in times of distress, when everything is fine, God's answer is a prayer to trust him. To trust him to deal with the people and the things which pull you in so many different directions. I'm going to talk about this and unpack this here in just a little bit when we finish up the psalm. But, but, but. For right now, just know that this prayer is available to you, and it allows you to focus on your faithfulness to God. It allows you to focus on your integrity. It allows you to pursue peace as far as you can. Right? That's where the songwriter lands. Look at verse 5. It says, Woe to me that I sojourn in Meshach. I guess is how you say that, and that I dwell among the tents of Kedar. Now, here's what, this, here's what this psalmist is saying. It pictures places that are nearby and far away, but none of them are, are like home. Uh, Meshach is, this, is modern-day Turkey. Here's what this area was known for in ancient times. It was known for trading slaves. When, when you look through the scriptures, that's always seen as evil to do that. And yet, this place is known for it. So it's this evil place. The tents of Kedar, they were nomads. They were descendants of Ishmael. They often warred against the nation of Israel. And so what this person is saying is that no matter where he goes, he feels like an outsider. Whether he goes far away or whether he's near, he's still an outsider. No matter where she goes, there's always distress there. And verse 6 and 7 says this. It says, too long Have I had my dwelling place among those who hate peace? I am for peace, but when I speak, they are for war. So not only is it where this person goes, they're stressed, but it's when, for too long, right? For as long as he can remember, for as long as she can remember, there's been this stress. They've wanted peace, but everyone around them wants war. That's stressful, right? 
And as long as this person can remember, that stress has been there, which means no matter where she goes, no matter when he's there, the stress will follow him. You see, there'll always be a time and there will always be a place where it's reasonable to say, I'm done. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. See you next week. Right? Like, that's where this psalm ends. And here's why it ends there, I think. It's because that's true. I was listening to this, to this podcaster over the break. And he made this comment. And he said, you know, the disruption and interruption of COVID will continue for at least the next couple of years. That disruption and interruption will be part of our lives. And at first I went, oh, God. I'm done. Right? But then I thought, well... Newsflash, disruption and interruption are going to be part of my life until I'm in heaven. That's part of being human. That's part of being me, because guess what? I bring disruption and interruption with me, right? Like the reality is this distress is always going to be around us, right? But we got to remember the context of this song. It's written to those who are traveling from the stressful places they live to Jerusalem where they get to worship. And it's a reminder, but get this, it's a reminder that this place, this earth, this town of Asheville isn't our home. It's just the place we live. And y'all, we're the lucky ones, right? When you look at what's going on in the world, we're the lucky ones. When you watch the news about the weather in some parts of the country, we're the lucky ones. When you step outside your door and look at the mountains, we're the lucky ones. This, though, isn't our home. It's the place we live. This place will always have distress. And can I let you in on a tension that I often feel as, as a pastor and as a counselor, as a person who loves you, as a person who the Lord has given me great affection for this church, is that I don't like stress. I don't like distress. I don't like when I'm in distress. I don't like when you're in distress. I don't like it when my wife and kids are in distress. I don't like it when this incredible staff team that I get to work with, I don't like it when they're in distress. I don't like it when you're in distress. And listen, everything in me wants to give you three easy steps, right, to deal with the distress. Everything in me wants to tell you, just take 10 breaths. Whenever you say I'm fine, just take 10 breaths. You know, it's a good strategy. It works for a little bit. Right? I'd be thrilled if meditation and if yoga worked, right? I'd be thrilled if I could tell you, relax, get a massage, Drink an extra glass of wine. Get high. It's okay. Right? But the problem is, why did that get a chuckle? <laughs> because I said hi in church? Like, remember, we live in Asheville, people. Like, this is legit. You know, like, here's the deal, though. The deal is, all of those things only work for just a little bit, if they work at all. The problem is, the stress is going to keep coming. But remember, this is a psalm. This is the word of God. And the word of God says, hey, when that stress comes, what do you do? Oh, we do what this person did. We pray. We pray. Right? Because here's why. Those things that I just mentioned, they only work for a little bit. They're like this quick fix. With God, with Jesus, the Holy Spirit, there's something better. That it's not, it's not a quick fix. It's healing for your journey. That, that instead of ways to deal with your stress, we, 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 we look to our stress and we look to Jesus at the same time. That's what this is saying. Jesus, our teacher and our leader, he said this about distress. He said this in, in, in John 14, 1 through 3. He says, do not let your hearts be troubled. Right? That's Jesus speak for when you get stressed, there's a better way, right? Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house 
there are many rooms. And if it were not so, I would have told you, I would, I would, I would have told you that I go to prepare a place for you. Would I have told you that I go and prepare a place for you? I will come again and I will take you to myself, and where I am, you will be also. You see, our home one day will be a place called heaven. Until then, our home is a person called Jesus. And here's the advantage of that. Jesus is with us everywhere and all the time. And so our home travels with us, right? Our home is a person named Jesus. And so how do we deal with the stress in our life? We take our stress to Jesus. We believe in him and we trust him. Because when we, when we trust one day that in, 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 in the home that Jesus builds for us, there'll be great peace. But when we trust in Jesus as our person, that peace gets to follow us. And so what do we do when we're done? We trust Jesus. Now, now let me tell you, because that sounds so churchy, doesn't it? Trust Jesus. Well, the idea of trust is to believe and it's to rest in, right? It's to, it's to like sit in this chair. That's the idea of trust. I'm so glad it didn't fall apart. <laughs> right? I just realized that as I sat down. I was like, I didn't actually sit in this chair before I moved to the... But, but this is what trust looks like. It looks like resting in Jesus. Now, can I tell you what that looks like in a practical way, too? It looks like this. When you're feeling distressed, ask yourself, what can you actually control? What can you actually control? Because what you do is you take that to this chair and you sit it down, which means all the stuff that you can't control out there, that's what you're trusting Jesus to take care of. Right? Because he can equip you to deal with the stuff you can control. The stuff you can't control, that's the stuff that causes a stress, isn't it? Like this person in this psalm can't control what people are saying about them. Don't you wish you could control what people were saying about you? Social media would be wrecked if that was the case. But you can't control what they say but you can trust Jesus to deal with them. You can't control what other people do. You can't, I mean, let's be honest, we can barely control what we do, right? When you sit in this chair with Jesus, when you trust Jesus, you trust him with everything that you can't control. That's what this psalm is doing. That's what trust looks like. And for some of you, for some of you sitting in that chair with Jesus, this will be your first time to trust Jesus. This will be your first time to sit in that chair and, 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 and the first time to believe him. And you feel this nudge asking you to do that. Well, for you, for you as the guy that's up here preaching, let me invite you to, to trust Jesus today, to sit in his chair, to sit at his table. Let him be the one who journeys with you. Let him be the home that you get to take with you and accept his offer of salvation. Or maybe you're like the prodigal son. Remember that story that Jesus told? The story that everything going for him in his father's house and he left and, and he experimented with everything you could experiment with and found out that they were just like the things that I mentioned, that they weren't the things that fixed him. They, they made plenty of promises that they couldn't deliver and instead, he comes back home when he's completely broke, has nothing, spent the family money, and he comes home. And what does he come home to find? He comes home to find a father waiting for him, looking for him, and welcoming him back home. Maybe that's you. And maybe it's your turn to, time to return to the journey because Jesus always welcomes you back with a party. That's what he does. Or maybe for you today... The question is this, like I've prayed to Jesus before and the stress keeps coming back. So what makes praying to Jesus any different than all those other things that I mentioned that are just band-aids? What makes Jesus different than anything else that'll take away the stress for just a bit if the stress is just going to keep coming? Here's why Jesus is better, because only he can heal you. Only he can change what you believe. Only he can change what you think. And only he can change the way you behave, right? And so you invite Jesus to change you as you deal with the stress around you, as, as he takes care of the stress around you. You invite him to change the person that sits in the chair, you, right? And so today, maybe we all need this special kind of healing that only Jesus can provide. And so what would happen if we spent time this morning 
before we came up and took communion, which, by the way, if you're at home, grab something to take communion with us here, right? But what would happen if you took time talking to Jesus, just you and him, right? Tell him what's pulling you in multiple directions. Let him ask you the question, what can you control? Let me help you with that, and I'll take care of the rest, is what Jesus will do. Maybe you need to invite Jesus to change what you believe, to change what you, what you think, and to change the way you behave. Maybe you need to invite him to change your expectation about stress, that maybe the absence of stress to let Jesus show you that he's present in the midst of that stress with you. And so the question for you is this, will you trust Jesus today? Will you trust him? Will you sit in the chair with him? See, this is what our communion tables represent. They represent a taste of home. Only it'll be much better there. Right? This is grape juice. I don't think it's expired. But the crackers, uh, well, it's grape juice. So it's basically wine, right? If it expires, it's still church proper. Um, uh, it, it's not, I don't think. Um, but their crackers, like home's going to be so much better. That's why it's a taste. Just a taste. Home is going to be better. But what it does represent is it represents our trust in Jesus. And so today what I invite you to do is to take some time. Sit as they play some music in the background. Sit and, and pray. Tell Jesus about your stress. Tell him about your distress. Invite him to, con- to take care of the things that you can't control And what you'll see in that is that we are all outsiders, just like this songwriter. We all have that kind of stress on this place from journey from this place where we live to the place we call home. And so what we'll do is take some time to pray. When you're ready, come up, grab one, go back to your seats, and we'll take the elements together. All right? Let's pray. Jesus, this is your word, and it is beautiful, and it is good, and I pray that that you would... um, that you would change us, Lord, that you would change the way we think, the way we believe, the way we behave. And you do that not to get us more in line with the culture, not to get us more in line even with the church culture, but to get us more in line with you and you alone. And that you would get the glory for that. And may, we, may you give us clarity on the things that we can't control. And in that clarity, may we declare we trust you with us. Christ's name I pray. Amen. You know, every uh, week when I preach, it's an opportunity in trying to figure out what I can control and what I can't control. Uh, God's word actually gives me great comfort in this because it says in God's word that the word of God will not return void, that my job is to preach it and to preach it as accurately as I can, as accurately as I know how, and then to trust God to deal with it after it leaves my mouth, right? And I've seen him be faithful to that time and time again. That's because this is my job. You've got your job. And you've got stuff that, that only Jesus can do. Right? Once it leaves your hands, it is in his at that point. And let Jesus do what only Jesus can do. And that's what this table represents. It represents a group of people gathered around the truth and the good news of Jesus Christ, that he died on a cross and rose from the dead to pay the penalty for our sins. You know why? Because we couldn't. It was out of our control. And yet Jesus shows us in a very tangible way that he can handle anything and everything that's out of our control because he handled the biggest thing that there is, our separation from God. And he provided a way for you and for I to have a good and right relationship with the God who loves us and the God who made us. And so we take communion today to remember that, that our faith is based on the truth of Jesus Christ. And so we start uh, with the cracker. And it is his body broken for us. And then the the juice, his blood shed for us. Jesus, I am so glad that we have a God like you. 
who can control the things that we can't, who is in control of the things we don't even know that we don't control. And you do it with love and mercy and kindness and peace. And you do it because we are your children and and that's what a good father does. And so, so Jesus, I pray today as we take this communion and as the taste of the juice and the crackers still linger in our mouth, that we will trust you. And we will trust you to bring us peace when the world around us keeps us, uh, keeps throwing stress at us. And that we would be a better people because of you. In Christ's name I pray, amen.
God for saving me. Thank you, God, for saving me. The rock of salvation. My hope is built on nothing. Great is your faithfulness. And I called your name. You heard my cry. Out of the grave and into life. My heart is yours. My soul is free. Thank you, God, for saying. saving me one more time thank you God for saving me you gave your life upon the cross you suffered once for all you made a The, the worship time today with a um, with a song that really tells a story uh, in a few ways, uh, but you know as we're doing the Psalms of Ascent, the song kind of came to mind because there's a story we have as Jesus is heading into Jerusalem for Passover, um, most likely with his disciples singing these Psalms of Ascent, you know that we have uh, that we we went through today. So throughout the series, we're going to be this song's going to kind of be sprinkled in during our worship time, um, and the story is there's these these two men that are blind. Uh, standing outside of the gates of Jerusalem, no doubt have heard what Jesus has done, that he, you know, believing that he's the Messiah, the chosen one come to make all wrong things right. And, and the story, they're, they're standing there, and as Jesus comes by, they shout, they say, uh, Lord, son of David, have mercy on us. And the crowd rebuked them and told them to be quiet, but they shouted all, all the louder, Lord, son of David, have mercy on them, on us. Jesus stopped and called them, and he said, what do you want me to do for you? Lord, they answered, we want our sight. So Jesus had compassion on them and touched their eyes. Immediately they received their sight and followed him. And so today, uh, you know, we celebrate trusting in Jesus, uh, the, the goodness of, of who he is that, that we find our home in him. And ultimately, you know, physical blindness may not be, you know, our issue, but we all have suffered from uh, spiritual blindness. And we thank God for opening our eyes, uh, taking off the scales that, that covered the eyes of our heart so that we could behold him. And so, um, for this last song, and, you know, no, you may not know it. That's okay. Feel free to sit down, to pray, to go pray with someone else, to do do whatever you need to to worship. But uh, we'll, we'll we'll close with this song. The blind won't gain their sight by opening their eyes. 
A king is coming to this city. Crowds around are following. If I could see, I would follow too. He heals the sick with his hands as he walks by. They reach for him. If I could see, I would reach out to the blind won't gain their sight. By opening their eyes Son of David, have mercy on me Son of David, have mercy on me Son of David, I want to see Son of David, have mercy Thank you for saving us. Uh, thank you to be who we can trust in. God, that it's not just a hope, just something that we kind of hope comes true. But God, Jesus, we know in faith that you are who you say you are. You've done what you've said you've done. You've said it is finished, and you've sat down at the right hand of the Father. So we thank you for that. We pray, I pray for all of us as we go into this new year uh, not to settle for anything less than you. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. If y'all could have a seat real quick, we have one more thing. Mary, come on up. Um, Mary Massey is a missionary in Moldova, um, uh, who's here, obviously, uh, not in Moldova. Um, this is for you. Oh, gosh. I know, right? Um, uh, and um, here's what's great. The world we live in now, uh, COVID has done many awful things. It has also allowed us to innovate and do some very creative things, like have an online audience, have an in-person congregation and an online congregation. And Mary, because uh, we also have growth groups that are virtual growth groups. So Mary in Moldova is a part of a growth group here at Fellowship Asheville. And so every Tuesday, right, is Tuesdays. 
7.30 for the group of ladies here, 3.30 in the afternoon for you, 7.30 in the morning for us, 3.30 in the afternoon for her, she gathers together in a small group here. Isn't that incredible? And she went here for years as she worked at, at, at Ridgecrest and... Um, uh, and so you we're here. And so I want to, when I found out she was coming, I was like, oh, let's pray for her. Uh, because how often do we get to do that? And so before we do, this is the part I haven't prepped you for. This is the part why she took the microphone and went, oh gosh. Um, give us one thing that after today we can be praying for for you. Like I'm going to pray for you now, but, but as a congregation, what else can we be praying for for you? Um, I guess I, I work with a bunch of kids from poor backgrounds in rural Moldova, so you can be praying for just the Holy Spirit to be working and moving in their lives and in the lives of their families, as well as in the local church there. So. Great. See, that wasn't yeah. so bad, was it? That was great. Great. So as, as we go from this place, uh, I'm going to pray for her, but let's all of us remember to be praying for that, for the kids that she gets to, to, to minister to, the kids that she gets to be Jesus with and in front of, which is very, very exciting, and pray for the Holy Spirit to do what only the Holy Spirit can do for them, which is great. So if y'all would stand with me and pray as I pray for her, um, and then uh, if you want to meet her, you can. You can also watch the convo cast we did with her um, uh, to get to know her there. So let's pray. Jesus, thank you for Mary. Thank you uh, that you have provided a way for us to to still be in contact with her and to be in community and fellowship with her. And I pray, Jesus, uh, that as she continues to do her ministry there and continues to, to love these little kids, that they see you uh, in her and that they, they want more of you in her and that you would give her creativity when she needs creativity and diligence, when she needs diligence and perseverance, when she needs perseverance, and that you would also give her rest when she needs rest. Jesus, that, that you would... Uh, continually just refresh her soul and give her body rest as well uh, so that she can continue doing the good work that she is doing there. In Christ's name I pray, amen. Thanks, Mary. It's great to see you. Uh, thanks, y'all. I love you. I love being in the church with you, and I'll see you soon. Bye, y'all.